from Gene, the technology from Dan, and some of the device differentiation from Sid and from Jason, the design center differentiation and value that we can bring to our customers uh, from Jason and as well as from Howe. And now let's, let's talk about customers. And obviously that's what, where it all comes together and what are we doing to build our business, to build a sustainable, high growth business going forward. So in May, we had first, it was the first time we announced publicly a pipeline. So in May, we talked about $760 million. Now as a reminder, this is qualified customer committed engagements. This is customers where we've identified a strong technical fit, strong value proposition, and these are programs that we expect will go into production in the next several years. We're taking conservative lifetime estimates for these different market segments, meaning one to two years in the mobile and consumer space and three to five years in the other uh, target uh, focus market segments that we're, that we're engaging in. And so again, in May, that was a $760 million pipeline, which actually I think is quite interesting, quite compelling for a company our size. And, in, and as we're integrating these different acquisitions that you've heard about today, since in those seven months, we've increased the pipeline to $1.25 billion. So just in seven months, pretty extraordinary growth in our pipeline. And I think that's really a reflection of this amazing market opportunity that's in front of us that Gene talked about. It's also a reflection of the differentiation of our products, the differentiation in the way we go to a market, the way we engage with customers, leveraging our design centers. Okay, so I'm gonna go in each one of these segments by individual uh, segments and go into more detail and dive into what we're doing with different customers, how we're growing this pipeline. So starting with EV. So we've grown that pipeline 34%. It's north of $400 million today, spread over 130 different projects. We're targeting diverse applications within the EV segment, starting with onboard chargers. You heard a lot about that just now from, from how, but other applications as well. Roadside chargers is a really important market. Fuel cell systems e-bikes, e-scooters, so not just your traditional electric vehicles, but anything that's uh, electrified and provides transportation. Today we have significant silicon carbide revenue in tier one EV players. We expect to ramp our GAN revenue in 2025, and we'll do that with these a variety of different applications, including hybrid designs would leverage the best of both worlds for SICK as, well as, as, as well as GAN. We're driving and growing this pipeline worldwide across diverse regions, tier one OEMs here in the US, as well as in Korea, Europe, Southeast Asia, as well as in China. We're leveraging all of those advantages you just heard about from how in this market, ultimately to drive a better consumer value, lower cost, longer range, and faster charging across a wide variety of voltage ranges. And we're accelerating time to market with the design center and the really compelling system designs that you just saw how talking about. And really a great example of that is our partnership with the Geely Group. Geely is one of the largest automotive players in the world. They have multiple worldwide automotive brands, including Volvo, Zeker, Polestar, Smart, many other leading car companies. So we partnered very closely with them. We established a joint development lab on site at VREMT, which is a Geely subsidiary that's responsible for the electronic substance systems for Geely. And from concept to start of production, we were shipping an onboard charger DC-DC integrated solution within actually less than 12 months. So that's actually astounding and you, if you think of about that and you put that into the context of a traditional uh, electric vehicle or automotive design cycle. And we did that because of this close, tight collaboration with our customer. And so we're repeating that model over and over again across a variety of tier one OEMs and their ODM partners around the world. We have a similar strategy and we can leverage a lot of those same 
resources and design capabilities as we look at uh, roadside charging. Roadside charging is obviously a huge market, growing market, huge investment. Today, we have our silicon, technolo silicon carbide technology in more than 50% of roadside chargers in the United States through our partnership with SK Signet. We are expanding and growing that footprint into other uh, partners in roadside charging. And we're working closely to develop solutions that will take the current 350 kilowatt state-of-the-art roadside charger from Tesla up to a megawatt or more. And we're doing that in the same fashion that we're, do that we're doing it for other, other EV applications. So it's, it's a huge opportunity, obviously the biggest opportunity as you, if you saw the data that Gene presented earlier, we have huge growth there, $400 million pipeline, up 34% just since our first announcement in May. Okay, now moving on, solar, solar and energy storage. Again, really important market in the big vision that Gene talked about. This is key to the electrification of our world. We've grown that pipeline, again, 66% growth, north of 250 million in revenue spread across 70 different projects. This goes into a variety of applications, traditional string inverters where we have silicon carbide revenue today, next generation micro inverters where we're leveraging our GAND technology, which we will be ramping in solar in 2024. Again, this cuts across multiple diverse regions, US, Europe, and China. Again, the sim many of those same similar advantages come into play for solar. There's some unique attributes to the solar market, of course. Low cost, high efficiency is very important. Small size and weight, and some of that is just practicality of how do you install the systems, how many people do you need to install a system in a residence or a commercial application. And we're leveraging our bi-directional GAN in this energy storage and solar applications as well that, that uh, Gene and Dan touched on earlier. More specifically, we have multi-generational GAN designs currently underway with the microinverter market leader. We have GAN programs kicked off in, in the North America uh, string inverter market leader. So this is a, a transition moving from traditional silicon to GAN, as we've talked about before. And we're in the majority of the top 10 customers today in mass production for string inverters. So this cuts across Again, multi-regions, uh, all of the major customers in terms of top 10 players worldwide in solar. Okay, moving to appliance and industrial. So this may be surprising to some of you, the opportunity that's in front of us and that we're actually, frankly, creating with our advanced GAN and silicon carbide solutions. This is a really exciting growth opportunity for our company the pipeline's up 250% just since May, up to 360 million and more across 200 different projects. And this is an area that we've developed significant momentum in tier one customers across home appliance as well as industrial applications. And again, a diverse set of customers here in the US, in Europe, as, as well as Southeast Asia and China. Specifically, we're engaged with seven of the top 10 home appliance manufacturers. We're shipping in the hair care leader flagship product in high volume uh, mass production. We are engaged in multiple generational follow-on designs and, and engagement and, and applications in the floor care and hair care market leader worldwide. That represents 20 to $40 million in future revenue, for, as an example. Additional examples, we're engaged in refrigerator design with the top three designer and manufacturer in Europe. Again, that represents 10 to $15 million in future revenue. A dishwasher design uh, here in the US, 10 to $15 million opportunity by itself. There's obviously many others across those 200 different projects. And Every application that you can think of uh, is moving uh, toward electrification in home appliance. They want the higher efficiency, the smaller size, the lower cost, and all of that plays to our advantages. And we're taking, again, similar, you saw some reference designs from Jason. 
we're, we're proving to these home appliance players that tend to move really, relatively slow that they can leverage this GAN and get this value for themselves, for their customers, and they're, they're in moving uh, forward with many, many designs, which is driving this pipeline. Again, the market moves a little slow uh, relative to a mobile charger, for example, but that would be, you know, we'll start to see revenue uh, late next year, ramping in 25 and, and beyond in home appliance, beyond the existing home appliance volumes that we're shipping today. Now, moving on to industrial applications, this is also a huge market. It's actually, it's actually kind of mind-boggling when you really look at the numbers. And I think, again, Gene touched on some of those numbers. Just heat pumps alone pop out as a massive uh, driver for future electrification, moving away from fossil fuels. We have really strong, broad customer engagements today across all of these applications, pumps, air conditioning, heat pumps, industrial motor drives. Specifically, we have a heat pump design in the top three player in that market. That, that could be 25 to $50 million, just that design alone. And then we have two out of the top three industrial pump players that are currently designing with our solutions that again is a, it will take a, a little time to get to revenue but we expect as we get to late 25 early 26 that represents 15 to 30 million dollars going forward so it's in a very exciting market in terms of migration from traditional silicon and driving into uh, both GAN and silicon carbide Now moving to data center. So data center is a very exciting space. We see AI is inevitably driving and pulling the power density and efficiency ever higher. And that's a perfect fit for Navitas. We've increased our pipeline to 80, greater than 80 million, growing at about 17% since, just since May. And we're focusing on that bleeding edge of the data center market. We have, as you saw earlier, we have reference designs that we can leverage that can accelerate time to market. We have engagements with the top three power system players. Uh, we have multiple engagements across multiple power levels. And we're going to continue to drive that tier, that bleeding edge tier of power density and efficiency. And the market is moving. It's, it's perfect for us because that's where the market's moving and that's where we can deliver the best value with our silicon uh, carbide as well as GAN and in some cases hybrid silicon carbide and uh, uh, GAN solutions. These power system engage, engagements that we have then lead into these end customer targets. The major data center sub providers that we all know well here in the US as well as in China and, and around the world. So this is again a huge market. We're just at the very beginning of it. AI is only going to accelerate this, this push to higher power density and improved efficiency. And then finally, and last but not least, mobile and consumer. So mobile and consumer, it's where we started. It's very exciting. This is the way I looked at this. This is a, a bit of a proxy for what we are going to see in the other markets that, we, that I just mentioned. Five years ago, we predicted this reality. GAN is going to go mainstream. GAN is, is mainstream today in mobile and consumer. It's very exciting. It's very gratifying after many years of working together closely with our customers to see this transition. And it's happening before our eyes. And we're seeing it every day with more and more demand, upside demand from our customers. And we're keeping up with that, that demand. We have lots of capacity, as Dan mentioned earlier. But it's a great trend. And it's only going to continue. As Gene said earlier, we're just getting started. I mean, the market is so big. And even these, what we're seeing today is just the very beginning. But it's exactly what we said would happen. It's difficult to predict exactly when it will happen. But we knew it would happen. We knew we would enable it. And that's what's happening today. So we've grown the pipeline now to 150 million plus, 50% growth just in the last seven months across mobile as well as non-mobile consumer applications. We're now shipping in 10 of the top 10 mobile players, including the five major mobile phone 
players as well as the five largest notebook OEMs. So that's quite a statement. It's a statement about GAN adoption, and it's a statement about the value of Navitas. And we're seeing this displacement shift occurring in a big way in many different places, none more clear than in China, Xiaomi, and Oppo. They expect 30% at least of their mobile phone chargers will be GAN-based in 2024. So that's a massive shift. It's proof of this is a, gain, a, a mainstream technology now, and that's only going to expand going forward. What's fueling all of that growth and that transition? There's, here's some examples of recent Xiaomi and Oppo uh, phone launches. These are not niche phones or super high expensive phones. These are mainstream phones, high, super high performance, great battery life, huge screens, state-of-the-art phones from you know, kind of uh, 67 watt power levels for their charging requirements up to 240 watt uh, power requirements. A mobile phone charger that's 240 watts maybe four times what you might carry around for your, your notebook. So it's pretty amazing, pretty compelling. Charge your battery in less than 10 minutes from zero to 100. It's really exciting and compelling stuff. And that trend is only going to be continuing to grow across the world. And over time, that, is gonna, that percentage of 30% is only going to continue to increase. Jason talked earlier about some new products and new developments that we have in even higher power applications. We're leveraging those, that mobile design center to drive new 100 watt and above designs. And again, that market is only uh, getting bigger as well. That represents more than 10 million in, in revenue just in these 12 programs that we have today. So mobile is really exciting. And then layering on top of that now, the non-mobile consumer market. You know, we've been engaging there for a long time. We've had some good successes in uh, desktop PCs, gaming PCs, but now we're seeing real traction with in the gaming market itself, the game console market. We're actively engaged with the top two game console players worldwide for future generation development. So this is really exciting. They can leverage the smaller size, higher efficiency, and more power density to make uh, more compelling products for their customers. It's actually an obviously a massive Massive opportunity. We also see applications for other non-mobile consumer applications like home networking, audio systems, as well as TVs. TVs get larger, but they get thinner and flatter, and they require more and more power. That's a perfect fit for our integrated GAN IC. So we have multiple tier one TV OEM design-in engagements underway today, where, and we expect that we'll be announcing uh, tier one TV shipping uh, starting in the first part of uh, next year. So I've listed some names here. You can see many of the, the key players uh, in the, the top 10 uh, tier one mobile players. We also have really strong partnerships in the aftermarket. And these are Many of these customers are really the pioneers, the ones that really led the way to show with the world what you could really do with a GANFAST IC. And, and I know that many people, all of us in this room, have experienced that, what that really means. It's exciting to be able to see how you can pack so much power, multiple ports in such a small space. A lot of that innovation doesn't come from those top 10 players, but it really comes from our aftermarket partners and, and companies like Belkin and Anchor. Those are great examples of customers that we've partnered closely with uh, over the years to really drive the envelope uh, in these uh, mobile charger applications. So that's a, a quick overview. Hopefully gives you some more color on our pipeline, our progress. I think the extraordinary growth that we have achieved just in the last seven months in our pipeline really sets the stage really well for us to continue to drive our revenue growth, to diversify into these, all these various markets while we continue to grow in our traditional core mobile and consumer markets.